What's up guys? I guess the floodgates have opened, but we've got another Gen 3 Pokemon this video. You're guaranteed to run into it, but catching one is a whole nother matter entirely. That's right, it's Gardevoir, the evolved form of Ralts. Of course, Wally gets a Ralts for free in Pokemon Ruby and Sapphire, but I remember searching one for a good 15 minutes without any luck as a kid. Oh yeah, and then there was that Gardevoir in Pokemon Mystery Dungeon that made me cry. Wally did swap out his Gardevoir for Gallade and Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire though, but we won't be covering Gallade since they are a very different Pokemon competitively. But luckily for Gardevoir, Game Freak didn't leave it high and dry, giving it another representation in the graceful Deanthe of Kalos. Hey, that makes two champion signature Pokemon in the week, though I think one champion is significantly harder than the other, but that's besides the point. Maybe that means Gardevoir will be as good as Garchomp. <laughs> All right, let's, let's find out. How good is Gardevoir actually? And in this video, we'll be going over these competitive formats. It should be fairly easy just by looking at Gardevoir stats to tell how good it might be. Yes, that's a great base special attack, but the base speed is too mediocre to sweep. Yes, the special defense is high, but that HP is way too low to be a reliable tank, as with its absolutely pathetic defense. So what does Gardevoir have going for it? Two quite big things, actually. For one, Gardevoir's move pool is actually massive, jam-packed with a ton of good coverage and support moves. For another, Trace is an incredible ability. With proper prediction, there are a wide range of Pokemon that Gardevoir normally couldn't contest that become easy switch-ins. Jolteon and Vaporeon's Volt and Water Absorb suddenly walled themselves out, while Earthquake using ground types like Flygon and Claydol suffered the same fate. These specific edge cases could give Gardevoir room to put that special attack to use. Gardevoir's most common set was a fairly standard issue setup sweeper with a core of Calm Mind and Psychic. The last two slots were open to any of Gardevoir's many moves tailored for the situation. Thunderbolt to hit water types, Ice Punch for dragons, will o to cripple physical attackers looking to exploit its low defense, and Destiny Bond in last-ditch effort scenarios. Past that, Gardevoir could also slot in Hypnosis, Wish, Fire Punch, Hidden Power Grass, Memento, or Dual Screens. And really, that was the trick to making Gardevoir work. If they weren't using its huge move pool, it really didn't have much over Alakazam or other Psychic types. That move pool gave it a good amount of other sets to run as well. With Mean Look and Hypnosis, Gardevoir could attempt to trap a wall like Blissey as a switch, sleep it, and then boost up for a sweep. But this was easily thwarted by fast physical attackers or any darker Steel types, since Psychic was its only attacking move. That also held true for its substitute based mono attacker set, which aimed to use a mix of substitute and hypnosis to keep Calm Mind boost safe. Finally, Gardevoir could play full support with a more bulky Eevee investment and focus on wish passing and healing, with the advantage of being able to actually threaten Salamence or Gyarados with its high natural special attack. Counters included strong special walls like Blitz and Snorlax, although they only managed to beat some of Gardevoir's sets. Metagross and Tyranitar did well if they avoided being burned, and Salabi and Jirachi's superior stats let them engage Gardevoir without coverage moves in Psychic Wars. The real way to beat Gardevoir though, and the main reason it wasn't top tier, was to just hit it really hard, since its defense was so lackluster. Gardevoir really could run any combinations of moves it wanted, and that was enough to make it somewhat relevant, but it wasn't the best at anything it did, and so borderline is where it came to rest. Gardevoir lost one of its biggest offensive options in the Ice Punch with the physical special split, but it did gain quite a few additions to its already broad move pool. Focus Blast, Encore, Pain Split, and Heal Bell were all useful options that doubled down on Gardevoir's signature variety, and it still had a huge amount of movesets. Its old calm mindset was still there, albeit with a few adjustments. Focus Blast and Shadow Ball formed the core of the set, and Taunt sometimes replaced Psychic to stop walls or tanks. With Choice Scar for Choice Specs, Gardevoir could either become fast enough to be an efficient revenge killer, or boost its already good special attack to monumental levels. And with the addition of Light Clay, it could go full support with dual screens and Memento. But the real way to go with Gardevoir was to split the difference between attacking and support, blending moves like Will-O-Wisp, Wish, Pain Split, and Heal Bell with Psychic, which was strong enough because of Gardevoir's special attack. Gardevoir's special defense was strong enough to withstand any neutral special attacks on it. But Gen 4 introduced a whole trio of Pokemon who did everything Gardevoir did even better, the Lake Guardians. With Azelf now staples of overuse and Uxie in underuse, Gardevoir really was just thoroughly outclassed. Even more so in underuse, Mesprit had a variety to boot. And Gardevoir's low defense were more and more exploitable as power rose. There was no way this thing could stand up to Scizor or Garchomp, and unfortunately, Gardevoir fell all all the way to never used. Yikes. Gen 5 saw Gardevoir just getting used to the never used position. There were just so many psychic types that did what it did better, including its goth reinvention Gothitelle, whose shadow tag let it one up the trapper set used two generations prior to far greater success. In never used, its variety let it be a strong option, but even there, it was outclassed by the likes of Masharna and Behiev. Sorry Gardevoir, looks like your moment has passed. Just kidding, Gen 6 saw Gardevoir a new lease on life with a new typing and a mega evolution. And what a mega evolution it was, with an absolutely 
ginormous dress. Let's talk about normal Gardevoir first. That fairy typing was enough to take it to underuse, where Choice Scarf let it be one of the best fairy type attackers available in the tier with a combination of Moonblast and Psychic. Paired with Trick, Gardevoir could also free itself up to still be a potent support and potentially turn a game around with Healing Wish or Memento. Its old standby in the Calm Mindset was suddenly a lot more threatening purely because of fairy type coverage and the new attacking bonus of Psy Shock, which could exploit special walls like Blissey or Florges. Finally, with Choice Specs, Moonblast started to really live up to its name, and Gardevoir's huge move pull meant it was at no shortage of coverage moves to use with Moonblast and Psychic, and Trick was always an option as well. This Gardevoir was very weak to certain steel types like Fortress and Escavalier, and strong physical attackers as always, and those problems were frequently exacerbated by being Choice Locked, but the new typing and Psy Shock synergy made it a strong underused contender. But Mega Gardevoir, oh boy. Mega Gardevoir was more than a contender. 165 base special attack boosted by Pixel and a nifty 20 points to speed and 10 to special defense amped up Gardevoir's attacking prowess to the next level. Before Auras, it was fairly weak, but come the remakes, Hyper Voice gave it a tool to use all that good stuff. While it still wasn't quite fast enough to sweep, Mega Gardevoir's sheer power made it one of the strongest wall breakers in the game, and that speed meant it could still hold its own against faster paced offensive teams in some scenarios. The ability trace meant Gardevoir could make those same gutsy switch ins it had from Gen 3, like absorbing Heatran's Lava Plume, stealing Manetric's Lightning Rod, throwing an Intimidator and trapping Magnezone, and then it can just Mega Evolve. It really was an incredible ability that sometimes meant Gardevoir could spend a turn or two in its regular state before Mega Evolving. Once that switch was flipped though, Gardevoir became a massive threat to any defensive team. A pixelate boosted Hyper Voice had an effective base power of 175.5, and coming off of 165 special attack, that's enough to dent any Pokemon. But it's the combination with Psy Shock and Focus Blast that made Mega Gardevoir so effective. As always, Psy Shock let Mega Gardevoir annihilate what Pokemon could resist Hyper Voice like Chansey, and Focus Blast handled the steel types that might otherwise give Mega Gardevoir problems. Finally, that old huge move pull came to play in the last slot, where Gardevoir could run Will-O-Wisp, Taunt, Calm Mind, Substitute, Shadow Ball, Destiny Bond, Memento. Hey, this reminds me of that list I rattled off the first time we talked about Gardevoir. However, steel types were an even bigger hindrance to Gardevoir than before, since it was now weak to their stab moves. Scizor in particular could one-hit KO with Bullet Punch with any offensive set, but Mega Metagross, Exegio, and Jirachi all pros problems as well. By the same token, fast poison types like Gengar and Mega Megabedro would easily ruffle Gardevoir's aura of confidence. Fire types like Victini and Heatran could resist Hyper Voice and answer back, although they had to be wary of Shadow Ball and Focus Blast. And finally, Mega Gardevoir didn't get any boost in defense, so that was still its pain point. Faster physical attackers like Weavile, Landorus T, Terrakion, and priority users like Talonflame, Bisharp, and Azumarill would leave it reeling. All that said, Mega Gardevoir was a tremendous choice for any team struggling with breaking through walls thanks to Moonblast Psy Shock Synergy, and boosted Gardevoir into its first overused position ever. Gardevoir in VGC is split into two very distinct phases. In VGC 2014, Mega Gardevoir still lacked access to Hyper Voice, making it all but useless. But somewhat surprisingly, regular Gardevoir still found a place in the metagame. As the strongest non-boosted fairy type, Gardevoir could still pick up kills on opposing dragon types and most Tyranitars with Moonblast, even when Scarf. It also had the options to go Specs, potentially hitting the enemy team for massive damage with a Dazzling Gleam. Movesets were pretty standard. While it potentially could play a support Trick Room role, Gardevoir more frequently found itself spamming Moonblast, Dazzling Gleam, and Psychic, with the side helping of a coverage move of choice. Of course, this Gardevoir had to be played carefully, as the prevalence of strong physical attackers made the metagame a scary place. It's especially a steel-heavy metagame. But Gardevoir was actually remarkably strong. It was a frequent visitor to top 8s, in fact winning quite a few of the tournaments throughout the year, with quite a few competitors using it, including South Africa Nationals, Georgia Regionals, Oregon Winter Regionals, and oh yeah, Worlds. Gardevoir was another member of Sajin Park's winning Worlds team, where partnered with Talonflame and Mega Gyarados, it formed a strong central trio thanks to Intimidate from Gyarados, giving it some leeway on the defensive side. Gardevoir was certainly a finicky Pokemon because of how easily it could be KO'd, but Sajin foresaw that, and with some defensive EV investment, Gardevoir was able to tank a hit from Mega Lucario's Bullet Punch in the finals. Hats off to you, Sajin and Gardevoir. Then with Hyper Voice Pixelate unlocked, Mega Gardevoir entered the scene in 2015. Regular Gardevoir still saw a good amount of play, but that spread Hyper Voice was enough to convert most players. This iteration of Gardevoir shared the same weaknesses as its predecessor, especially pronounced now that Landorus and Kangaskhan were threats who could exploit its low defense. It was still used somewhat though. Hitting someone with that Hyper Voice was quite the appetizing treat, and what the set was built around, frequent other moves included Protect, Psychic, Moonblast, and Psy Shock, basically what you expect. Some chose to go for extra safety, such as Bioski's second place SoCal Regionals Gardevoir, but in the end, the most effective Mega Gardevoirs proved to be those that used its extensive move pool for a different use. 
Trick Room. This is exemplified by Japanese player Daichi Kumabe, aka Scar, who used Mega Gardevoir to go all the way to 6th place at Worlds. Scar says he used Gardevoir because it represented a more offensive Trick Room user than Cresselia. With its good natural base speed, Gardevoir could outspeed Tyranitar while still being slower than the frequent offensive threats it would end up turning the tables on in Trick Room. Gardevoir is about as common in 2015 as it was the year before, showing up 10 times in Worlds Top Placers, and twice in Top 8, as 8th placer Lajos Waltersdurf also used it. And that's it, so how good was Gardevoir actually? Uh, up and down. While it was mostly irrelevant in Gen 4 and Gen 5, it was a decent choice in RSC, and by the time Gen 6 rolled around, it became downright great with its new typing and mega evolution. Gardevoir has a lot of tools that make it unique, so it's just a matter of fitting it into the right team. Although at this point it has a mega, it has a great ability, a huge move pull, awesome typing, I don't know what else you could give it. I guess more speed, maybe. Hopefully it keeps doing well, although Mega Gardevoir is borderline at the moment, so we'll see. Thanks for watching everyone, and as always, if you liked the video and you want to see more, be sure to subscribe to False Swipe Gaming for more weekly Pokemon content. And of course, as I always say, comment on what Pokemon you want to see next. Also, thank you so much to our patrons for continued support of our videos, and thank you to all of you as well. And follow my crew on these social media platforms, and that's all I got. See you next week, everybody.